Well, let me just take a few minutes to um, first not just congratulate CPLC for 50 years of tremendous service to 300,000 plus people last year, but millions of people over the 50 years. But more important than the service, and I think more important than uh, its actual impact on individual people's lives is this notion of 50 years as a teacher to the rest of us about the notion of what America is supposed to be, a place where people are helped, a place where people are treated fairly, a, a place where people who have been knocked down can be helped up, a place where this is a central theme, if you think about it, of a group of both immigrants and families that were here before immigration from Mexico was immigration when this was Mexico. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Being taught by Chicanos por la causa, this notion of having a cause and what is the cause, the cause is to make human potential reach its highest level for every individual person. I mean, an unbelievable objective. Yes. So I want to thank CPLC for teaching me the 17 years that I've been here, helping us to be a better university, helping us to redesign and reconceptualize a university in service as opposed to a university focused on itself, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But I want to put something else on the table for everyone to think about, and it's something that I don't get. I don't get. We live in Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona is an unbelievable amalgamation of the United States and Mexico together. A part of both countries in the past a part of the United States now, and we live in a world where those that offer this false rhetoric of nationalism and this false rhetoric of hate and this false rhetoric of attacking people, including people from Mexico, is so bizarre. Yes, absolutely. I, I, I don't understand it. Mexico and the United States are both emerging republics built on the ideas of the Enlightenment. We had our Declaration of Independence in 1776, the Mexican Declaration of Independence from Spain in 1821. We both fought our wars to gain freedom of our countries, to gain the identity of individuals, to throw off the power of families through heredity. We struggled to advance our democracies, both of us, we had civil wars, we had revolutions within our countries, but if you read the Mexican Constitution, if you read the Mexican Declaration of Independence, if you read the American Constitution and you read the American Declaration of Independence, they are at their core the same thing. Absolutely the same thing. They are about the fight for human dignity. They are about throwing off the notion that everyone isn't equal. We are equal. All of us are equal. It's about this notion that, particularly in the Mexican Constitution, particularly the Constitution of 1917, the notion of racial equality written into the Constitution, the notion that Mexican culture is derivative of the indigenous people, the people from Spain and the people from Africa, all coming together to form Mexico. So if you look at these things on which the two republics are based, the two republics are based on the same idea. So here we sit in Arizona. We have this unique opportunity. We're from both. Millions of people, hundreds of thousands of families from both republics. Both republics that are increasingly successful. I mean, it's unbelievable to see what's happened in the American economy, in the Mexican economy, in the emergence of both of these republics with 450 million people between them, both G20 countries, both unbelievably competitive, both unbelievably striving for better things, both functional democracies, both. And so this notion of a wall, are you kidding me? I don't know, I don't know of two democratic republics that have walls between them. I can't, 
I, I can't think of such a thing. I can't think of such a place where two countries with the same ideals and the same aspirations and the same fighting to drive these aspirations forward can't find a way to work out their complexities, which of course we can in every possible way. So here we live in Arizona and we have this unique, unique opportunity, Arizona. Indigenous peoples are still here where they were. Indigenous peoples lay the foundation for our society here in Arizona, if we listen carefully. American immigrants, Mexican immigrants, other immigrants all come here to Arizona on this fringe, on this connecting point between the two republics, between these two sets of democratic ideals. And so what better place than Arizona? Certainly not Texas. <laughs> what better place than Arizona to try to drive this democratic ideal, this ideal of equality, this ideal of liberty, this ideal of justice for all, this ideal of every person reaching their potential, what better place than Arizona to make that happen? Drawing from all the talent and all the insight and all the perspective and all the cultural differences that make this place up to then derive this new place with this new solution and this new way of doing things. So CPLC has taught us at ASU and taught me as a person that we needed a different kind of university. In 1985, this university had 98% of the people that attended it were from families in the upper half of family incomes. In 1985, only 200 of our freshman class were people of Hispanic descent. In 1985, only 12% of the students that attended the university graduated in four years. In, in 1985, 98% of the student body was Anglo. Again, are you kidding me? Well, that's not true now. Under our new design of ASU as a new American university, we have basically said that our university will not be successful unless it is representative of the totality of the socioeconomic diversity and thus the ethnic diversity of this state. It is. It is. Our freshman class last year didn't have 200 students of Hispanic descent. It had over 4,000 students of Hispanic descent. An unbelievable transformation in everything that we're doing. We don't have the 5,000 or 6,000 first-generation college students that we had when I got here in 2002 or 2003. We have 25,000 first-generation college students. So what we have been able to do here in Arizona by watching C CPLC, by watching the spirit of change here, by watching the, the relentless, constant commitment to social justice. I'm not talking about all the arguments that we have with a lot of people around here who don't know what social justice means. I'm talking about the winning of the arguments by advancing and advancing and advancing. We see all of this. We see all of this, and we have reconstructed our university in every possible way. People say we need more kids in engineering. Okay, if you need more kids in engineering, you better grow engineering. 10 years ago, we had 8,000 students in engineering, very few minority students. Today, we have 18,000 students in engineering and thousands of minority students in engineering today. So here's what we need. Here's what we need. We live in a society, whether we like it or not, wherein educational attainment will be the single most significant predictor of a person's capacity to adapt to whatever economic and social and cultural changes lie ahead. For, some, for whatever reason, in this democracy we call the United States, in this democracy that we call Arizona, we're, we're falling behind. We're not giving everyone an equal chance to move forward with their education, and we've got to do that. So at ASU, we're doubling down on every front. We've launched the College Pathways Program. If you screwed up in high school, you can't make it through high school, you didn't make it through high school, whatever happened to your family, whatever your circumstance is, you got dropped here by aliens. We don't care where you came from, you're going to find a way to Arizona State University and you're gonna be successful. We found a way.
We found a way that if you can't be admitted to the university for whatever reason, you, you goofed off when you took your test, you were working 45 hours a week your junior and senior year in high school, and you ended up going to the community college or mom wanting to closer to home, we now have 250 degree programs. You can go right to the community college, right to ASU, and you can move forward. And if you need financial aid, we have it because we've designed that university. And I won't walk you through all the things that we've done. What I'll walk you through is, it is because of 50 years of CPLC that we're a different university. We're connected in every possible way to the things that CPLC are doing, is doing. It's because of CPLC, because of the leaders that we've seen tonight, because of the kinds of people that have made things happen, because of the many conversations I had with Congress, Congressman Pastor, because of all the ways that we've altered our university. We have built a new university which will enable this fledgling democracy called the United States on the border of Mexico and the United States called Arizona to be the place where these things got solved, to be the place where there's no more of this silly rhetoric about stupid people crossing the border or this or this or whatever that silly rhetoric happens to be. This will be the place. This will be the place where the highest ideals of democracy will be attained because we've attained the highest ideals and the highest levels of educational attainment. Now, one last thing related to that. We have a moral problem. There are children brought to the United States by parents who graduate from high schools in Arizona, who want to move forward with their lives, who often don't even know that they're not in the United States with proper documentation. These students today are called DACA students. They are children. They want their lives to move forward, and only people who are not moral would not see them as children and not do everything to advance their success of their individual lives. We have had thousands of these students we will have many, many more of these students, and we need to all do everything that we can to make certain that at least in this one small way, we remember who we are, why we're here, and what kind of democracy we live in. Thank you.